and welcome to the Black Hat Bushcraft channel. One of the most versatile pieces of gear that you can carry with you into the woods is a simple tarp. Now there are tons of different types of tarps on the market today. There's everything from the 5x7 semi-disposable emergency space blankets to giant tarps that can be used to construct shelters for multiple people. Uh, so you have tons of options as to what kind of tarp you want to use and it all depends on how you're going to use it. For me personally, if I'm going to set up a tarp shelter without my hammock, so it's going to be an on the ground type tarp shelter, I like using the DD 3x3 three three meter tarp. It's an excellent tarp and it's a good balance of being robust but yet being lightweight. If I'm going to be setting up my hammock, I go with the DD 3x3 three three super light because it's much more compact, it's lightweight, but when it comes time to set up a tarp on the ground, I prefer that regular three by three because it's just a little bit thicker and it's just a little bit more over made so to speak so today i wanted to share with you my top three favorite tarp configurations to set up with this dd three by three tarp so without further introduction let's get started on these right now to set up this plow point shelter i'll use my dd three by three tarp i'll be using one of my guy lines to tie it out to a tree and I'll use that toggle for the tie out point. I'll also use three additional stakes to stake out the corners. Due to the size of the tarp I'm using, I'll need to attach my tarp way up high on the tree, just a little above my head height. To do that with this guy line, I already have a pre-tied bowline knot. And I'll just come around the tree, bring that cordage back through just like that. The next step is to attach my toggle to the line with a marlin spike hitch. Now that I have my tarp unpacked, I simply loop one corner over top of my toggle, and that'll give me my first tie out point nice and secure. Now the next step in setting up this plow point is to come to the far back corner and pull the tarp out very tight being careful not to overstretch the tarp, but stake it out. You do want this to be tight again to make your shelter have a very nice crisp ridge line, especially if you're dealing with bad weather. Right now we just have to stake out the sides. Once again, we want to pull the tarp out nice and tight, but careful not to damage the tarp at the same time. This ground's wet. All right, and we have one more corner here to pull out. Just the same, nothing fancy about this. Just making sure to pull the tarp tight carefully. I always drive my stakes in at a 45 degree angle for the soil in my area that works best. And that's it, just that simple. So you can see really well right here what I mean by that nice crisp ridge that I have going on with this shelter. And you want that with any plow point shelter as it does a great job of cutting the wind. If I were camping and I had stormy weather coming, I would want to make sure that this ridge was pointed into the wind to help cut that wind. And it'll also, uh, by having that crisp ridge, it'll help keep your walls intact and help shed rain. That's really where a plow point shelter excels, um, exceptionally so as in stormy conditions. It works well for that, it gives you coverage um, on both sides of your body. So it's not like a lean to where you just have the coverage over the back. This gives you almost like a tent effect. And of course I can lower this down to create a different pitch. So if I wanna close the shelter in, I just lower it down on the tree. If I wanna open it up to get more air or to have a better field of view, then I just raise that up. But it's a great shelter for stormy conditions. So you can see how much coverage I actually have using this three by three tarp. I mean, this thing goes out for several feet out in front of me. And I've again, got coverage on both sides. I could probably set a cot up in here and still be covered. This is just an awesome shelter. It gives you a lot of space. If I wanted to put a fire, I could have a fire here or out here. Obviously with the tree, I can't center it, but that's okay. I'll, off to the side, it'll still give me the same effect. Um, it's just a great shelter, again, especially for stormy conditions. And being simple and quick to set up, it makes a great emergency shelter. So the plow point has to be one of my favorite shelters of all time. To 
To set up this modified Adirondack style shelter, I'm going to be using my DD 3x3 tarp quick deploy ridge line, four additional toggles, and four MSR groundhog stakes. Just a toggled bowline knot. I'm going to run this over to the other side and put in a trucker's hitch. Create a slit loop. Run that through. Cinch it down. And now, just create this security hitch. Keep it all nice and tight. All right now my ridge line is in place. All right, so the first step in setting up this modified Adirondack tarp shelter is I folded my tarp to get the two corners here. What I'm gonna do is pull this over the ridge line as if I were gonna set my tarp up in a diamond configuration. And because I've done this before, I've learned that the second loop up, so here's the point, one, two, the second loop on each side is where I want to toggle this out. So I kind of get it pre-positioned. One, two, that's it right here. And now I'm going to use toggles with these Prusik knots to pull this out nice and tight. Now to toggle this out, I'm simply going to run my Prusik knot through the loop and toggle that. Right now from here, what I'm going to do is keep tension on the tarp, walk down to the other end where I'm going to repeat that process. Just run this Prusik knot through. Add another toggle. Now I can pull tension on it. Make sure everything's lined up just like I want it. Keep it nice and neat. All right, that should work. All right, so now I'm ready to stake things out here in the back and that'll require four stakes. And this is my corner point here. So I'm gonna come in to the second loop and I'm gonna pull that out nice and tight. Now I may have to adjust the stake just a little bit. So I'm gonna put it in half-heartedly right now, knowing that I may have to come back and adjust it. And I'm gonna come over and put in another matching stake on the opposite side. So this goes in one loop. So you can see I'm just folding the excess tarp material up underneath, and that will become like my ground cloth. All right, and so the next step is to go ahead and stake out the front. To do that, I'm simply gonna run the bowling loop on my guy line through, just like we did with the plow point, and toggle that out. Now I can run this line out, and to stake that out, once again, I'm gonna be using a Marlin spike hitch on my stake. So I just come down here with my guy line, turn that Marlin spike hitch, use the stake for the spike, drive that down into ground. Now that we got everything else set up, we can come in and pull these corners out nice and tight. And that gives us the side walls. All right, it looks good. And now the other side. All right, one last step. All right, for this last step, what I'm gonna do is come into the center tie out and once again, Toggle out this bullet knot. Now I can pull this out tight. And it just so happens Mother Nature has provided well for me behind the shelter. I'll show you. All right, so you can see this fork in this maple tree right here. And what a valuable resource. I'm gonna get an idea. Once again, another Marlin spike hitch. You can see how useful that hitch is. Comes in useful for everything. And now I'm just gonna toggle out this guy line up here in the fork of this tree. Perfect. Works perfect. Now that I'm down in the shelter, you can see that it gives me a really good amount of coverage, but at the same time, I have a nice field of view. And that's something I really like about this one, especially if I'm camping, let's say across the campsite, I have a friend. This allows us to see each other and converse better. And it just allows me to see what's going on around my shelter. But at the same time, I still have really nice coverage. And I like that I have coverage here on the side as well. If the wind were blowing or whatever, that would definitely help to shield me. And it gives me a place to put my boots or my gear, things like that to keep it protected. Um, again, my, one of my favorite features is the fact that I have such a nice ground cloth with this coming from the same tarp. 
Obviously it would be a, a big plus to bring an extra moisture barrier and I always do that. But if all you have was your tarp, this gives you some coverage and could be a lifesaver keeping you up off the wet ground. Um, but overall, this is one of my favorite shelter configurations, especially for good weather or maybe light showers, moderate rain. This will do a great job. If, again, if it was going to be a heavy storm, I'd probably choose something more suited like a plow point that's really better designed for that purpose. But just a great shelter, a fun one to use and definitely worthwhile knowing. To set up this improved lean-to shelter, I'll use my DD 3x3 tarp, quick deploy ridge line, five additional toggles for tie-out points, and four MSR groundhog stakes. So the next shelter I'm going to call the improved lean-to. And to get started, I folded my tarp in half square as if I were going to set up an A-frame type shelter. And the first step with this is to just bring my tarp up over the ridge line. Just like how we're going to set up a regular lean-to, but rather than using the corner tie-out point as we would do with like an emergency style shelter, I'm going to come up to the second point here and I'm going to toggle those out on both sides. That's going to give me a little bit of an awning in the front. So once again, same way as before, just run my Prusik loop through and now toggle that out. I'm going to keep a little tension on that as I walk down the cart and repeat that process on the other side. Right, and just cinch that toggle out nice and tight. That's step one. All right, so step two is I've come back here to the back of the shelter and I'm going to fold my tarp up to the second loop just like I did on the ridge line. I'm gonna pull this out at a 45 degree angle to help shed water. And again, drive my stake in the ground at a 45 degree as well. Now I repeat on the other side. Right, pull it up to the second loop. Sometimes you have to go back and readjust your first stake. Just if you're a little picky and want to make sure your shelter is perfect. Which of course I'm always into that. So you can see I have that nice and tight across the back. Just like any traditional lean-to that you would use. And now what I'm going to do is toggle out these corners. I've got the bowling knot. Just pull the pocket through. Use one of my stakes. Cinch it down. All right, I'll do the same on the other side. Quick and easy. All right, all I have to do now is stake out these guy lines, pull them out and get the right angle. May have to adjust that one. I always put the first one in a little bit light. That way if I need to adjust it, it's not too difficult. Come over here to the other side, same thing, Marlin spike hitch. Again and again, you hear that same hitch coming up because it's so multifunctional and quick and easy to tie. All right, and I'll pull this out, stake it in. Looks about right, and that's it. All right, now while this looks great just like it is, if I want to or feel like I need to, I can always come in here with that center point and I still have the same system set up here in the maple tree and I can make just another marlin spike hitch here. I'm just using one of my extra tent stakes and there you go. Perfect. That'll help open the inside of the shelter up, especially keeping the, the tarp off of me in the morning with condensation, things like that. So this is another nice solution for that. All right, so now that I'm in here, you can see just how good the coverage with the shelter is. If we would say an A-frame is a two-sided shelter, I'd call this a one and a half. All right, so you still have the added benefit of the A-frame, but you have a better field of view around your camp. You also have better airflow. And right now, I don't know if you can tell I'm sweating. It's about 85 degrees out here in this morning. Um, and having the airflow is very important. If it were winter time, then an A-frame would be nice. I'd want to seal in every bit of heat that I can, but this time of year, I want open and I want airflow. 
The nice thing too is I can still have that fire out in front of the shelter if I wanted to, and this does a better job than a traditional lean-to at catching that heat and letting it circulate around inside my shelter. So this is a great configuration. It's very spacious. Once again, I have the added advantage of a ground cloth with the extra tarp. You can see that's enough for me to lay on. I'm not on any part of the ground, so it'll help uh, be a moisture barrier for me. So just a really, really good configuration and multifunctional, of course in different seasons all right so once again just a different view you can see i can sit completely up straight my hat is at least eight to ten inches from the roof so i have a lot of space in the shelter that's another nice thing if, if you had to bed down for the day while a rainstorm was passing you have space in here you can move around you could do fire prep work you could do tool maintenance and you've got plenty of area to work you've got space for your gear um, so again just a very good configuration with a tarp like this, a three by three, to give you that space and that comfort in your shelter. All right, so I wanted to show you just a quick and neat little modification you can make to these kinds of shelters with toggles on the corners like this. All I've done is got a Y branch here and I've cut it to length. And I'm just gonna come in here and pull this line out with this toggle. And I can adjust the pitch of that by adjusting the angle of the stick or adjusting the length of the stick. And now all I have to do is come out here and stake this thing out once again. Can see just how much that one little modification opens up the front of the shelter and on the afternoon like today's going to be where it's going to be very humid and muggy this will do a great job of helping the air circulation into the shelter and make it just that much more comfortable i could obviously do the same thing on the opposite corner and really open this up but it just makes the shelter that much more breezy on a day like today which is very welcome and again it gives me a nice field of view it also allows me to get in and out of my shelter as i'm setting up camp just a little bit easier if I had to choose one tarp shelter that was my absolute favorite, this one would definitely be a strong contender for that. It's just a very versatile shelter in all conditions. I especially like this little modification. It almost gives you like a plow point effect on this corner. Just a great versatile shelter. And with all of these shelters, those Y branches like that can add modifications and change geometry as needed. Always consider that with whatever shelter you're using. Mother Nature provides once again. All right, so there you have it, my three favorite configurations to use with a tarp when I'm gonna be ground camping. Now, honestly, this time of year when it's hot outside, I don't do a lot of ground camping. I much prefer to be hanging in a hammock. It gets me up off the ground away from the insects and the critters, and I just get a better night's sleep and I have a lot less back aches when I sleep in a hammock. However, at certain times of the year, it's very enjoyable to be close to a fire and camping up under a tarp. Sometimes I'm using a different tarp, more traditional, like my Tentsmith's oilcloth tarp. And I've got a video on a setup that I really enjoy using with that. By the way, a friend of mine named Blackie Thomas, whose channel here on YouTube is called Blackie Thomas, uh, recently did a very similar video to this. He and I were talking about this and uh, he was gonna throw out some of his favorite configurations and in, in return, I would throw out some of mine. So if you guys are interested, go and check out Blackie's video that's similar to this. I will put a link down below in the description box. And I know he has a different system and a subtle different way of doing things. And so by watching mine and then watching his, you can get some different ideas and find the system that best works for you. Just in case you're interested in any of the equipment or gear that you see me using within this video, I'll provide you with some links down below in the description box. I have a Self-Reliance Outfitters account where most of the items that you've seen me use today can be found. There's also an Amazon link for my Amazon storefront, and there's also an Exotac link, which I am an Exotac affiliate. So I'd like to thank you guys for taking the time to tune into this video, and I hope that you've enjoyed the content. I appreciate all your interest and your support and your kind comments that you guys share with me. It's what fuels me and keeps this whole project going. I hope you guys are doing well. I look forward to talking to you with another video again very soon. And until that one, take care and God bless. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see similar content, please subscribe to the Black Hat Bushcraft channel. Thank you for your time and interest and I hope you'll come back soon. Take care.